Hey you guys, the show hasn't started just yet. It will start at 7. What I'm doing is I'm starting it early so that I can try and invite some people. So, just hold on to your horses if you're watching already. So, I got like, uh, let's see. All right, so I'm going to invite some people, we'll try to anyway. Hi, Jessica, how you doing? Feel free to and, uh, invite some people here. I'm gonna try and do the same myself. Let's see. The show doesn't start until 702. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got my big screen up there and then I put the phone right here. I'm gonna see if I can start sharing this before. Um not so I won't be like I did last time. How are you today, Jessica? I got two minutes again. I'm trying to. I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to hurry. Oh Lord, Jesus. Ah. What's up, Mr. Ron? How you doing, sir? Hey. Um. Question, Ron. Do you or your wife have MS? Find a migraine, tell me about it. I was going through that a couple of days ago. Going through that a couple of days ago. Dude, really? For how long? One more minute, guys, and we're going to start in just a second. I'm trying to share this darn thing, and I'm just not, I feel like nervous when I be sharing this. My fingers get all clammed up, and I'm be like trying to, trying to rush and hurry. And, and I'm like, huh, huh, huh. You got diagnosed two years ago. You went to Westover? Since 2007, you sound like me. It was, I got diagnosed in 2011 and I could have got diagnosed when I was like 17, 18. 
All right, so it's 7.03. I'm a minute behind myself. Geez, trying to share. Um, but yeah, hi, okie dokie. So basically, <laughs> I thought you didn't go to, what's, you didn't have to say Doherty like that, man. Gosh, that's messed up. But you good, got your family. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, in the, you in the MS community, so I can look past the Doherty. But no, I, I, I had some good friends that went to Doherty. Um, but hello, guys. Today, we talk about something that um, I feel is probably taking a lot of us out slowly maybe not for sure um but and then maybe not all at once probably sometimes at different times and whatnot um hello miss regina and hello all that are uh, watching at the moment um and feel free to share the live video and today we are going to talk about fear letting it go letting go of fear the fears that we have dealing with this MS. Um, I'm pretty sure when you guys got diagnosed, uh, when a lot of you guys got diagnosed, that, um, let me bring this a little closer. When you guys got diagnosed, that um, a whole bunch of stuff went rambling in your brain. And you were wondering, you know, what is my life going to end up being? Um, a lot of us worse than others. Um, a lot of us, when we got diagnosed, we were still able to walk like how we're walking now. A lot of us that got diagnosed, we plummeted so fast. And it took us out real quick. Um, to the point to where some of us are bedridden, um, wheelchair bound, walkers, canes. You name it. And it's a hard pill to swallow, especially if you were in a position where you felt that you were awesome. And not saying that you wasn't awesome, but to you, you're like, you had it. Well, no worry in the world, you know? So then this monster comes and just pulls the rug up from up under you. What can you do about that? To be honest, um, in a situation like this, nothing really, other than trying to figure out what is what are the next steps for me. That's what you can actually do, because people don't look at the part after nothing. Marathon runner. You was a oh man, you was a marathon runner. So are you able how's your how's your mobility now? And while you're answering, while you um getting ready to answer that. Um continue. But um we look at the nothing, we stop at nothing, we don't look past the but maybe still I can change this around, regardless of the doctor saying that, you know what? We're going to have to get you a motorized wheelchair. We're going to have to get you a wheelchair. We're going to have to get you a walker. We're going to have to get you a scooter. We're going to have to get you something that's going to have to aid you with your, um, aid you with your walking. We don't look past that. We stop right at that nothing. Sometimes. Okay, but no running distance. Okay. Some, when we stop at the nothing, some of us stay there and have been there for years. And then some of us... We go past the nothing, and then something might happen. Heck, we might get a little worse, and then the nothing pops back up. And we get stalled again. Or we go through a relapse, and we get st we stall again. And some of us, when we stall, we can't get up. And I can say firsthand I've had that plenty of times. A lot of it was, I can sit up here and, and, and confess that a lot of it was my fault. A lot of it was... Me not being able to control things outside of my situation. Who can love me, who I wanted to love me, who I wanted to be friends with, who I wanted friends to be. 
you know, the friends that I, what I wanted them to do for me or, you know, all of that changes. And some of the stuff that we don't want to accept, how people view each other. You know, you get that, I love you, you're my best friend, and I'm glad. Please share. And, and anybody else that's watching, I totally appreciate it and welcome. And today we're talking about letting go fears. And um, and that's part of those fears that we have. Am I going to lose my friends? Am I going to lose my loved ones? Am I going to lose my family? Am I going to lose my job? All of that happens or has happened to all of us. And maybe not all of it and some of it all of us and some of us have gotten some of that back but not to the degree that we want it and so what did you say sherry sometimes we let the sherry says sometimes we let their pride well sometimes we let our pride get in the way we find ourselves to with too much too with too much pride to ask for help it's really special when a person do, does something out of the blue without you even asking them because they know your situation. It's the little things that really count, not the big things. And it's good that you said it, Ms. Sherry, because the world has made us feel that bigger things are very important. So in a situation like what we're in now, a big thing for us would be if we're in a wheelchair, the fact that we can get up and walk. That is a great big thing. But have you noticed that even though you're in a wheelchair, are you able to move around? You know, are your arms moving? Are you pushing yourself? Or can you push your, you know, can you roll yourself? And th that, that probably would consider a little thing because you're not really worried about that. You're too focused on, can I get a, can I please got this chair and start walking? But what happens? And um, what happens? If you lose your arms, that one thing that you're really not paying attention, the one thing that you're not worried about, the one thing that you're not thinking about, the one thing that you're not happy about, not saying that people out there aren't happy, but the focus is on being able to get out this chair and walk. But what happens when you lose your arms too? Then that's a whole nother thing built on top of that as well. So are we really looking at ourselves? Are we really realizing that there's nothing past nothing that we can be happy about? So I got some bullet points, right? I'm going to read these couple of comments here, and then I'm going to go over the bullet points. Let's see. Uh, Jessica, you lost your job to the company. Um, the company sending tech support overseas. Yeah, you know, a lot of us lose our jobs when it comes down to um, this MS. I lost, friend, I lost friends, but gained new friends. I got a new bestie. She don't know it yet. <laughs> she doesn't know she's your bestie. or But, uh, so our bullet points for today. Our first bullet point. Our fear is what we lost. Well, our fear is on what we lost and also not wanting to lose more. That's our first bullet point that we're going to go over. All right. The second is, fear can only be overcome by yourself alone and no one else. Third, living your best life with who you are presently produces a better past and paves, away, paves ways for your future. That's the third. So let's go into the first one here. Our fear is what we've lost and also not wanting to lose more with the raise of thumbs who doesn't want to lose more see how many thumbs comes up I'm gonna sit me a thumb yeah you know I should see a lot of thumbs popping up there you know we don't want to lose more and we've already lost a lot a hell of a lot some of us lost more than others and so the last thing I want is for to, to, to lose even more so when you go back to that um, bulletin 
I mean, that, that bullet point, our fear is what we've lost and also not wanting to lose more. Going back to what I was saying about the arms. You don't want to lose your arms if you're in a wheelchair. You've already lost your legs. So think about it in this sense. If you don't work your legs, if you don't work, I mean your arms, if you don't um, work on your arms, if you don't worry about your arms, if you don't take better care of your arms, it's liable. Like you don't pay attention. If you don't love the fact that you have your arms, that you're moving, it's possible that those might go as well. Okay. What about those that can walk? You're too busy worrying about you're not having your job, which I know that is hard. I know that it's hard because we all need money, but you're so worried about not having your job, so worried about not having your friends, so you're having that pity party, and you're able to walk as of right now, maybe an assistant with the cane or a walker per se, but you're stressing yourself out so much. You're fearing the loss of even more friends, the fearing of losing something else, but you're not realizing that you're bringing more and more stress and more tension on yourself to the point where MS is just sitting back and lounging with his legs crossed saying, give me more. Come on. Oh, I love this so much. You know what? Matter of fact, since you're going to give me all of this and you're making me stronger, uh, let me throw a flare up in there. Oh, man. Yeah. I like that. You do stocks now? What's that? Stocks. Well, we talking about. I'm 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 being a little clu clueless right here, so you gotta excuse me. Yes, MS loves stress, and a lot of us gives gives that to MS because we get so stressed out because we can't do something that we used to do. Instead of um, instead of realizing that we still have more to offer and that's the point of this here we have more to offer than you can believe and then then better than what you're thinking of yourself because we look at ourselves and look at what have i become i'm become a lesser person than i was before but who to say that you can't be great now who to say you can't be great because every single one of you guys are great i've some of you i've personally seen your pages i've personally been blessed by you guys a lot of you are awesome some of you i haven't really um gotten a chance to be around or talk to on facebook but i guarantee there's something special about you can you not see it are you blind to yourself due to the fact that you're so worried about what happened back then or who you were back then Oh, you just, okay, I just didn't want to say stocks and buns. Oh, shoot, that, that, that's cool, man. I don't, don't know anything about that, and uh, that's something that I wanted to get into, but uh, I don't think I'm ready at the moment. Um, but, so, fearing what you lost, and also fearing the fact that you might be able, you might not be able, but fearing the fact that you might, lose something else man you know we had that pity party that stress and all of that just comes in and then you know you're you're losing your friends you don't have nobody to talk to about it and kind of like Ron said sometimes we need to go get a counselor somebody a therapist something let it all out if you have to pay somebody to listen to you that's better than anything than to just sit um and bottle up and and just cried out not saying that crying is not a good thing exactly miss jessica look at the possibilities ahead you ms only takes um well let me say let me say it like this i don't think that would have been right to say it like that uh you can allow MS to take just everything away from you or when we fight like I know that you guys are trying to there are things that you can do as of right now and even in the future that can bring a smile on your face 
And every time you bring a smile on your face, you feel good. Because that's what a smile comes from, from you feeling good. Yeah, you might have more bad things. And it's possible. But you have to find... And I think this is like a cliche when it constantly saying you ought to find something optimistic about life and all that. But it's true. It is so true. And um, let me pause and say hello to everybody. And um, and Eldrick, man, we're glad that we met you, dude. Because, you know, we really don't know how much we help each other. And we need to do more of that. We need to bring a little more awareness. <clears throat> um, I'll get into my, my shirt later, but um, so you know, that's that's basically that um, that first bullet point. All of us have been through that moment, especially being first diagnosed. Um, our fear was we lost everything, and heck, what else can MS take from me? Jeez, so. The second, fear can only be overcome, and this is where we, our turning point gets to. Fear can only be overcome by yourself alone and no one else. True story. You cannot go out and get a friend and ask a friend to take your fears away. I'm scared. As long as I got you, I'm not scared anymore. So again, what happens when that person leaves? Some of our friends don't stay by our side. You have to find strength in yourself. And again, that same person you were, when you would call yourself being strong, you're still that same person. The only thing different is you might not be able to move your legs, your arms. Heck, you might even talk, you, you might have a stutter. Um, it affected my speaking for a little bit. And I say this a lot, and I say it even more because I feel it is true. Me being diagnosed with MS actually for me has been the best thing, even though I went through that first year of hell for myself. Around about 2014, got diagnosed in 2011, 2014, I realized that this has opened the door. For me to realize, and I say realize once before, it opened the door for me to look at myself. What are you doing? Do you not know that when you got diagnosed, how much stress that you were up under in the first place? A lot of us don't realize and don't look back at our life and see how stressful our life was before we even got diagnosed. How messed up our life was. How we wasn't eating good in the first place. How we was mistreating ourselves in the first place. How we were indulging in bad habits in the first place. This is a disease, an illness that you couldn't go in the doctor office and, and, and catch it from someone else or end up somebody bleeding and you touch their blood and you end up getting it. This is a dormant disease that comes around and activates offers some of the most weirdest things. Let's see. And so I'm going to go to the comments a little bit here. Uh, Miss Regina was talking to Jalissa. And hello, Miss Barbara. Let's see. And my day is going fine. And, you know, Ron Simmons said it was the best thing for him because. Let's see. Because he remember, he remembers that he's a leader. He got rid of most of his. See, that's what I'm saying. You know, <clears throat> I was weak. I wasn't a leader. Um, Ron, I was weak. I can tell you that um, I feared a lot. And I allowed things to affect me. I was put on a lot of stress. I went through a stressful life only because I allowed myself to. 
I didn't stand up for myself until probably till I got to late middle school. Got to late middle school, and then that's when I started to want to fight back and take a stand. But it was kind of a little too late. I don't let things go for so long, and I just waddled in for a little bit. And it wasn't until that first year when my walking was messed up. My thoughts were messed up. Me not thinking anyone loved me. Not thinking anyone wanted me. Not thinking that anyone really wanted to be a friend with me. I wasn't even a part of any friend, uh, Facebook friends uh, or, or groups that had MS. You know, my wife at the time kept telling me, you know, you might, maybe you need to look for some groups on Facebook. And I'm like, Psh, whatever, man. I, ain't, I am not doing that. They ain't going to understand what I'm going through. You know, it was 2011. And heck, I actually really ain't know if they did. It wasn't until 2014 when I started searching. And I got tired of not being able to talk to someone. Because, and, I, and it's sad that it's 2018 and I still feel the same way that outside of our community the world is still looking at us as in we don't exist and the reason why we don't exist is because we're hiding and i know a lot of us this doesn't this is not aimed at those that are needing to hide due to the fact that they're in a position where they can still work their great job and they don't want to lose their job but for those like myself and others that can actually speak out and let the world know that we do exist so that that can change so that those people that are in the position to have those jobs that they're trying to keep can keep those jobs due to the fact that, oh, okay, so you have MS and I understand what's going through. What do you need accommodation for? That's what we're not realizing. Our biggest fear is that if I tell somebody, they're going to treat me wrong. Which, in the case, sometimes they do. But, again, if we don't talk, we don't speak up. And you don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm just using my platform. You don't have to do what I'm doing. But you can actually go out and talk to someone personally. Heck, you can go to a next door neighbor. Do you know anything about him, miss? Do you know what's wrong with me? Do you know why I'm in a motorized chair? Uh, yeah, that's that, um, that's that, um, um, you don't know. It's a little bit of a lie. <laughs> um, Jessica says that MS has taught, um, taught you how to, um, take better of yourself, better care of yourself. And Regina states that, um, yeah, Regina feels like her being in an abusive, an abusive relationship brought on her, or her, um, MS. And a lot of us have gone through that, that trauma, trauma, physical trauma, mental trauma. Guys, that's why, and especially if you see that it is almost... Hey, if it's like seriously genetic, like you got a mother or a dad or you and a son, pay attention to your kids. Have your kids pay attention to their kids. Get that stress from out of your lives, out of their lives. Because if, if the people around you are not diagnosed, that's a great thing, but then... That doesn't mean that they don't have that dormant gene floating around somewhere. I have a couple of scares of mine, you know, and I worry about my, I worry about at least three of my kids that have come across a scare and I just really hope that they can stay away from stressful events. Yeah, uh, getting out of an abusive relationship is wonderful, man.
you didn't uh you it wasn't discovered until you had your first child three months later this miss regina didn't uh, find her ms until after her first child and miss taylor Ron, you wrote a book dude i mean eldrick you wrote a book i need to talk to you man Cause I'm working on one myself. Run! I love that. I love when someone can pop up and say they significant other, or heck, even a girlfriend or a boyfriend, is on top of what they're doing, is staying on top of them, is being in their corner. You know, I'm not gonna let you fall. If you're gonna fall, I'm gonna fall with you, man. Even if it's a best friend, if you're gonna fall, I'm gonna fall with you. I'm gonna help you get up. I love to hear stories like that because it's it's far far from like it's it's a sad like i don't even know how to e express how how upsetting that is to know that a lot of people have left other people due to the fact that i can't deal with it i can't hang with it you're just not the same person anymore and guys hello i do appreciate you i'm stopping in on uh fierce friday and today's um Subject we're talking on letting out um letting out over um shoot ha I didn't say that right letting go out of our fear I forgot to go I don't know if anybody has an, a problem with that with texting and typing and you feel like you're typing the whole thing and you miss out on what's going on maybe like you you leave out five hundred words run them in Albany is too as well sir. Um, I saw that that you were in Albany. It's a lot of us in Albany that has MS and so strange. You got diagnosed two months after the wedding. So but you know, like you, you stated that you could have your issue was started like possibly way back in two thousand and seven. Um but still, I am so glad that she said that, you know, bump MS. Yeah, sure, man. Um, I'm actually getting ready to, to contact a couple of other people here. It's a lot of us here, dude. You'll be very surprised. When we went to the walk this past year, there were only 20. But the 20 people that were there, I've never seen before. I went to two dinners last when this year those people there i did not see at the walk so i want to say it's 20 plus people in albany not the surrounding town 20 plus people in albany that has ms where are they ah i couldn't tell you um it's I, I'm not even going to go too far saying military exposed. I am going to say that a lot of stuff that we're eating, a lot of stuff that we're putting on our body, perfume, cologne, lotion, powder. Yeah, it's more, it's more, it's more than 20. You'll be very surprised. Very surprised. went to a MS dinner and it was about 20 people in the dinner that I went to and the second dinner it was two more new people that wasn't in the first dinner and so like I was stating then we had the walk a couple of people was outside of the counties of Albany and so yeah you can't you gotta think about Lee County Americas uh, <laughs> Salsa see look You've met more than 20. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Bruh. But where are they? You you don't know that they're here unless you meet them. Um, I'm pretty sure some of them don't do uh, Facebook. and But we had enough of people with the walk that we had. That the walk should have been bigger, I felt. But um, maybe... This upcoming year might be a little bit better. I don't know. I don't know um, what they're going to do. But um, 
Dang, Jessica, you got diagnosed after your two years after your marriage. Uh, mine was like six. But um, so yeah, fear can only be overcome by yourself alone and no one else. You have to be the one to get your fear and say, "Boom, kick it out, kick it out the door, Just kick it out the door." See, you don't live fear anymore. I already got MS bothering me. You don't live here anymore. Kind of like love sometimes. You have to let it go. Jay, Jaskas and Kansas. Is that Kansas? Kansas. Are you in Kansas City or in Kansas? Just Kansas. You in the whole Kansas. So I'll last, I'll last one before I ask to see if anyone wants to come up here. Our last bullet point is living your best life with who you are presently produces a better past and paves a way, better ways, pays better ways for you to live a better future. So I don't know if you guys understand that. Think about it. You're here presently. So whatever you do now affects what your past is going to be within a couple of seconds. Because you live your present life and then you move through time a couple of seconds and that becomes what, like this right here, what I just did is going to be the past in a minute. Me doing this is going to be the past. So presently, what you do now is going to produce a better past. One that you can look back to and say, dang, you know what, I enjoyed that. Because that got me to where I am now. Me doing that got me to where I am now. Me sitting up and not allowing MS just because it's taking stuff away from me, but just to steal my joy. You can only allow it to steal your joy. Because what if it wasn't MS? Hey, let's go to a relationship. Girlfriend, wife, friend. Hey, let's go to your job. What if your job took your job away from you? And just like somebody at the job was like, hey, he ain't doing what he's, he or she ain't doing what she's supposed to do. And they fire you. What do you do? You're going to find another job. Now, I know you can't find other legs or whatnot, but still, you can find something else that can occupy your mind in a good way. It's just taking the time out to sit and trying to find it. Sometimes it might take days. Sometimes it might take weeks. Sometimes it might take more than one attempt to do it. And for you guys that are coming in, hello, I totally appreciate it. And uh, we're talking about letting go fear. So living, <clears throat> living your best life now it's, it's so very important being diagnosed with MS. And I was talking to someone about, look at it like this. And, and kind of like what I was hitting on a little bit, a couple of minutes ago. Before you got diagnosed, before you got diagnosed, how were you eating? How were you living? A lot of us want to sit and say, I'm going to, and not to bring, well, I am going to bring God in it because a lot of us sit and say, why did you curse me with this? Why did you allow me to, why did you allow me to get this? Why haven't you taken this away from me? Think about it. What have you been doing in your past life, which was present at that time? What were you eating? What were you putting on yourself? And to be honest, the environment can be an issue as well. But then even when you talk about environment, you still talk about ourselves, people. What have we been doing? Fast food restaurants. And if my friend Paul was here, Paul would tell us fast food restaurants. It's only a curse when viewed as such. Edward, you, you hit the nail on a coffin. And that's how we view it, as a curse. 
We view it as a curse because we don't want it. But guess what? We have it. And you let a doctor tell you you're going to have it for the rest of your life as of right now. Not saying that they're not going to find a um, cure. So if you know that you're going to have it for at least a while, why not try to live your best life with it? MS can be a very good blessing for a lot of people. Because I know a lot of folks that had MS before and they were a, uh, can't say those words on this show, but man, they was a handful. You said, why not you? <laughs> and, you know, I had a, um, I had something come to me in the dream and I and it just verified to me that what I'm doing right now is um is my purpose, my God-given purpose. And it's so funny that I had that I had that somewhat vision when I wake up to my phone, Proverbs um Proverbs 19:21 pops up and it goes, let me make sure I get this right. Um, many plans. Crap. Many other plans of, um, dang, crap. It says, uh, many are the plans in, in a person's life, but it is the Lord's purpose that's that prevails. The Lord's purpose that prevails. So that's Proverbs 19, 21. If you're going to remember that, go look at it. I tried to memorize it. It's in my short-term memory, but I'm going to get it in my long-term memory. My short-term memory is shot. So, Because that's something that I really want to live by. Edward says, this diagnosis threw me all the way off. I had to and still have to do a lot of self-evaluation. You're going to constantly have self-evaluation. That is one thing that MS is going to do. You're going to have to self-evaluate yourself every day almost. But I guarantee that every single one of us can do it. It's when you decide not to and to accept the fact that you have MS and saying that, all right, and everybody has a bad day. It's nothing wrong with having a bad day. It's nothing wrong with having a bad day. Heck, it's nothing wrong with having a bad week. But true enough, once that week is over and you're back on to that stronger you, then you go again, having the best day the best couple of days until you have a flare-up. And hopefully you don't have a flare-up for a long time. But while you're not in a flare-up or not when, when you're not down, you make the best of it. Don't sit up here and wallow in it. Don't sit up here and wallow in the fact that, dang, man, I just missed a whole week. I just got sat down for a whole week. God, oh, now I got to start all over. It's been plenty of times where you didn't have MS and you had to start over. There's been plenty of obstacles that have been thrown at you when you didn't have MS and you had to start over. What did you do? You start over. So why can't we start over now? Why can't we look at MS as being an obstacle that's been constantly thrown in our way? And hey, guess what? If you're playing sports, you might break a leg. You might get paralyzed off of that. And you have to end up doing the same thing. Look at MS as just an unexpected incident. And now that I'm going to live with it, and I'm going to make the better me that I am now. Because until I know for sure, they come on the news and say, well, we have a for real cure, and they give it to me, and they say I'm relieved from having MS, then that's when I'm going to go out and try and be the old me, depending on how old I am right now, 
than be the old me and be the better old me or whatever the case may be that you want to do. But until then, we got to learn how to be the best we are right now to make to even make a better future so that we can look back at the past and be happy about what we've done how we've grown so does um anyone would anyone like to come up and talk about how maybe tricks um how um how many tricks or they can not how many tricks how many uh i don't know what i'm thinking about what how do they have any ways do they have any ways of uh being a little bit more positive in this battle with ms i don't know what i'm coming with tricks i mean well you know, I guess some could be considered tricks. You know, how can you trick yourself and feel like, oh, this is a, this is gonna be an awesome day, <laughs> and you died in the inside. Uh <laughs> but yeah, you know, anybody can come up. Um, if you want to come up, just let me know. And again, like I've said before, if you don't want to be seen, you can have your phone sitting stand up because I can't do the phone, the um, the um, the personal phone thing, like I was doing last time. But um, but if you would like, you can come up, hold your phone straight up that we don't see your beautiful or handsome face, and you can talk about it. And you can let us know things that you might have been going through that has have you down and that the fears that you're battling with, and how you've overcome them, or maybe you just want to sit and talk about your fears and maybe ask for help from the group that's watching right now. And later on, somebody might even um, hit on it, um, ask a question, might comment on it. So you want to be open for that as well. Um, so feel free to ask and I'll pull you up or hit the button to ask to come up. But um, Jessica, are you saying that you would like to come up? Ms. Sherry says every day that God give you to live, you should wake up and thank God and make it be the best day it can be. Hey, Miss Sherry, a lot of us, uh, well, you know what, going back to, let's go back to Proverbs 19, 21, where at the beginning I stated that many are plans. You know, many are the plans. And we plan so much. We plan so much. Because we want to have control over a lot of things. We plan so much, and then when a wrench is thrown in it, and our plans go down the drain, we're so hurt. Sometimes we're so stressed. Sometimes we're just just thrown off to, heck, we can be kind of hated. How I like hate other people. And there are a lot of warriors that are in a bad shape where they uh, just can't stand being around other warriors or just being around other people. They're just nasty. There are people out there like that. And that is a sad thing. Let me see if I have you right here, Jessica. You'd be very, very surprised. Very, very surprised. Trying to see if I can bring Miss Jessica up here. Miss Jessica, Mar Mario, and Paul. Y'all are becoming my favorite <laughs> contestants on the <laughs> I can be the best feed. Hello there, ma'am. How are you? I am fine. Fighting the migraine, but I'm fine. Okay. And what are you what are you doing to combat it? Uh, I took some Excedrin migraine, okay. and I have um, an oil that I'm smelling called Tanway. Okay, okay. Uh, um, how long does it take before it, it can kind of help? Five minutes. Okay, cool. So you just recently took it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So what was your biggest fear? 
that I would end up in a wheelchair. That's my biggest fear. And you haven't gotten anywhere near that, correct? Um, my mobility has suffered. Uh -huh. I have a walker that I use inside my house every day. Okay. I mean, I, I've moved from the cane to a walker. And I have a scooter when I'm outside my home. Okay. So what was the, what was the time frame between the cane and the walker? Seven years. Okay. So it wasn't something that just like re that, that happened recently. No. It, it, after my daughter was born, I took a downhill dive, so to okay. speak. Okay. And that's when my symptoms got worse. So. Okay. It, it took a while. <laughs> okay. So. How do you come back that when you get up when you get up in the morning? I stretch. I have some um oils that I rub onto my legs uh -huh. every day. Okay. Um I actually have a book that has oils that are good for MS. Okay. And I rub them on my legs and um at least three times a day and it helps believe it or not it does help more than people think there are a lot of skeptics out there okay. um but i'm a firm believer in the more research you do the more uh -huh. knowledge you have the better off you are it's funny that you say about the skeptics and whatnot when I first got diagnosed and I was letting the person know, I was in a grocery store and she was like, okay, she wasn't doing flips, but her attitude made it seem like she was flipping around in the store <laughs> doing cartwheels and stuff. And uh, she was like, you know, I got MS too as well. And I'm like, you know, what you taking? Now I'm not on any medication. I go to a herb doctor. And I left all the medications and stuff alone. I'm doing herbal stuff. I didn't get it really get. She gave me her information and I misplaced it. And it, during those times, my mind was nowhere near how I, the person that I am now. And so I, I probably wouldn't have called anyway. Um, but those, those okay. um, incidents where you kicked yourself in the butt, you know, and, um, now I pride myself on just talking to anybody and getting information from anybody, guys. Don't be scared to talk to someone. And I think that's the thing with us, you know, when we're, we're, we're scared to tell, again, like I was stating before, because how we're looked at and perceived to be basically invisible. And if we come out, then there's bad things that, that, that happen, unfortunately. And and I only think that it's like that because we close ourselves in and we allow the world to treat diseases like this. Not saying that MS is, and there Facebook goes again. Facebook does. I think Facebook sits, and when I start talking about stuff that are that's really good, Facebook says, you know what? Uh, mm, he's not talking about fake news. He's not talking about fake news, so we're going to have to we got to interrupt. <laughs> we got to interrupt. Um, Facebook, please come on, man. Sorry about that, Miss Jessica. You tag the book. Where you tag the book at? But you can tag the book. What's the title? But yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure what Facebook is doing. Facebook don't like me right now. I think the last put, the last couple of shows have been great, very informational. Um, I think we've allowed to help a lot of people, um, and I shall continue. Um, but Miss Jessica was actually informing us if you guys couldn't hear her pretty good is about how um, 
And I was trying to say, Ron, um, Jessica, Ron said tag the book, the name of the book for the um, oils, because that is that's great. Um, and like me, I've been experimenting and kind of taping. Um, I got to tape some more stuff. I'm trying to do like a little blog, video blog about me and my black oil. Um, it just hasn't been doing recording right, so I'm gonna have to figure out something else before I start posting it. But um, the black oil has basically helped me a little bit, especially with my fatigue. It has. I'm up all day now, where. I was basically nar narcoleptic to a sense. And I know a lot of it, some of it probably came from the medication that I was taking. I've pulled back on a lot of my medications. And um, I'm, I'm even able to go out, even though I sweat a lot. I can't stand sweating. And it was even worse, the fact that I couldn't stand the heat outside. But then also sweating, I'm like, ugh. Jesus, I can't do this anymore. But now, the only thing I'm going to worry about is like, darn, am I, am I going to go into the store soaking wet? <laughs> or because um, my air conditioning is not working in the car. Um, but outside of that, I'm able to go outside with no problem with the heat and barbecue for a little bit. Um, and I'm meaning myself because the heat level here in Albany can be awful sometimes. And if you're not in any shaded area, it can be a god-awful thing. But um, I could try and bring someone up, you know, someone else up to see if um, someone else can stay on a little bit longer than Miss Jessica. But um, I'm going to hit these bullet points one more time. You know, our first thing was our fear is what we, um, our fear is in what we lost and also not wanting to lose more. So, Ron, did you just say you think you have that, or you, uh, or you got it because you see the book, the, the title of the book? Because if you got that book at home, man, you ain't using it really. I need to come to your house then. And let me borrow it if you, you know, if you don't want to use it. How you have a book and you don't want to use it? Um, a lot of things that. Uh, I'm finding out about trying to live and eat by your blood type. Um, it's a book out with that. Hold on, I'm finna tag that book. Let me tag that book. Eat right for your blood type. That's it. Eat right for your blood type. So, I'm giving you guys this. This is an awesome book. And if you know your blood type, you'll be very surprised on what certain blood types it can cause a lot of different issues um me being a negative and it goes by just a b a b or o again a or b a b or o all the negatives and plus are in the same thing so if you're a negative a plus you're still an a and with me being an a i basically literally just supposed to do um kind of Vegetables and then even certain vegetables aren't good for me. Um, I can do chicken. that's like in a in a, a middle plane and some fish um, not all seafood and whatnot and I've actually been doing that um, I've really almost cut out red meat if not cut it out and definitely um, pork is like less than none and I can't actually say that I feel better But then you look at an O if you read the book and it tells you about the um, O type, O type is like a carnivore. They can sit up here and stuff their mouth with any type of meat and be all right. Their digestive system is fine. 
And so I look at the O and I be like, I envy you. I have a cousin, one of my best cousins, almost like a sister to me. She's an O type and I just see her pigging out and just eat any type of different meats and stuff. And I just be want to punch her in the face. I be want to fight her and stuff because I eat vegetables. But it's all right, it's all right. It's all right. But yeah, if you know your blood type, that's a great book to look into. Or if you want to go find out what your blood type is, or get the book and look at it and, and see how interesting because it tells you about how the people with that certain blood type gain that blood type. We're all in a focus point and then we start migrating in different areas then our blood types start changing. That's where the research come in. That's why we sit up here and we say, hey, research, look into stuff because we are, I'm going to be honest with you, as in the world, we can be so dumb. Even though we went to school, we got college degrees, we can still be so dumb because we confine ourselves. Regardless of how smart we are, we still confine ourselves. Even when we go to our doctor, <clears throat> even when we go to our doctor's appointments, we define, we confine ourselves. We don't ask questions. We don't sit up here and question the doctor. So, um, matter of fact, I went to the doctor yesterday, and my doctor was like, "Uh, you taking all your medication?" Nope, don't like the way some of them make me feel. Um, but I can't say that I started taking black seed. Oh, you know, she asked me about my fatigue. How's your fatigue doing? You're doing a little better. I see you don't lost a lot of weight. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did my um, thank you, Koji, again. I did my 40,000 step walk, and she looked at me like, You did what? I said, Yeah, I was like, Um, I didn't run. See, run. But that's a good book still. Look at that book and um, you can find out what types of meat that are good for you. Yeah, you can't eat a lot of meat, man. You, you, you suck, dude. But yeah, go look at that book. Actually, matter of fact, you can go online and they'll tell you. You don't actually have to have the book. You can go online and look for that website, the official website for that. Um, and... Put your blood type in and read the information about your blood type. Let's see. Let's see here. For your blood type, uh, I might have. No, that's pharmaceutical. I don't know if this is the right thing. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right, I'm finna tag the um the thing here. That website right there. You go to that website and it will give you information, and you can just go down to your blood type specific over on the side. You can shop for your blood type. They got all this stuff for your blood type. Vitamins for your blood type. Um, I've been on this site a lot looking at stuff. And let's go back to what Mr. Koji was saying because I was posting this stuff here. Let's see. <laughs> see, look at all these O's. Gosh. Ooh. Yeah. Um. I believe so too, Koji. I believe I can get to that. Yeah. Man, research it again. And so like I was saying, I was telling my doctor about, hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing a um, black sea oil situation. And she's like, okay, is, is it helping your, um, is it helping your um, fatigue? I'm like, yeah, man, I, I used to be like a vampire. Couldn't go outside, couldn't stand the heat. I still, God dang, you know, see, Y'all gonna have to get out, get get out my feed, man, with these O's, bruh. Y'all messing up my concentration, man. You've you been lazy. You gonna buy it and read it? Okay. Uh, yeah, get the black seed oil, man. My, but my doctor didn't discourage me or anything. Didn't say, oh, man, you're doing something wrong. She's like, okay, all right, well, that's good. 
And see, that's what I'm saying. You know, you have those doctors where they're only thinking about, you know, their money. So they're like, oh, no, you might need to stop that. Which the Black Seed Oil does tell you, you know, you need to be conscious about the medication that you're taking. Because uh, I have um, issues with high blood pressure only because my high blood pressure comes from I have uh, fibromyalgia symptoms, especially on my left side. And so, like, um, like how I'm sitting right now, if my um, thigh is hitting the bed for too long, man, a burning sensation starts from my foot all the way up here. Man, it's like, are you saying take the B12 daily for fibromyalgia? Are you saying, are you telling me that, Ron? Or yeah, yeah. Um, I stopped. I stopped taking. I stopped taking my uh, blood pressure medicine when I uh, when I got it. And but the lady was telling me at the vitamin store that uh, maybe take two a week. But I just stopped taking it. I had an actual blood pressure scare um, this past weekend. Um, it was kind of going up high, like 180 over 1 over 6. But um, it was something going on, stressful, um, anxiety and whatnot. And that's what, I think that's what triggered it. Um, I haven't had really a, a, a spiking issue here lately. But, um... You take, and Ron, I'm still confused, and, and correct me now, the B12, are you talking about because of the heat or the B12 due to you might be having nerve issues? Oh, man, Koji, it's been higher than that, bro. I've had to, um, I got, I end up going to um, behavioral health because of some mental issues I was having at the time. <laughs> And, you know, they had to lock me behind the fence, whatever. Straight jacket type thing. Okay, maybe not a straight jacket, but uh, they wouldn't give me my medication. And back then, it was like at the beginning of when I was diagnosed, I used to have spasms and and, 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 um, and a little MS hugs where I used to bounce off the bed pretty much. And, um, okay, for energy. But, yeah, the Black Sea all is helping me for my energy, like a lot. And I'm taking the two teaspoons, one in the morning and one at night. I really, I haven't had any issues with energy at all. So, and I didn't have that before I started taking this black seed oil. I haven't changed anything. Um, well, I guess I've changed my eating habit as well, according to my blood type. So, and that might have something to do with it too. But, um... Okay, vitamin B uh, complex helps with that. Okay. What, Miss Terry say? Oh no, Miss Jackson, you just found out um four new lesions today. How are you doing? Well, let me ask you this: Are you camera shy, Miss Jackson? No, you know I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything. You are? Okay, well, let me ask you this question. Um, I would love, you know, I would love to talk um, to you. And like I've offered any other um, warriors that are shy, that um, if you are shy and you still want to come up and talk, you can hold the phone where you're not being seen. Um, uh, because I would like to talk to you about, um, you know, what, how, how you're feeling right now, what you're going through. And it's, it's great that you came on because, uh, the show is a, about fear. And I know right now you're fearing. So what's next? I just got these four lesions, you know, what's going to happen next? And the last thing, and I know this might be hard, but the last thing that you need to do is to worry yourself to the point that you might even cause yourself to get even more lesions because of the stress. 
So, all right, Elgin, hold on, sir. Let me see if I got a little thing for you here. Um, do you have a con? Do you have a camera? Do you have a camera, Elgin? Cause it's not showing your name. Like, do you have like one of the little things on the, the bottom where it shows that you can pop up? <clears throat> but that, that's a good question, Koji. Um, with the new lesions. Uh, I guess I'm confused about what you just answered. So I decided to have some... Oh, ha, you decided to have some absolute tonight. <laughs> Tell me about it. I, 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 I get you. What new symptoms do are you having? Well, still, do your iPad have a camera? Because you might have to, you might, if you don't have a camera on your iPad, then it's not going to work. But if you do, you might have to step out and then step back in. <laughs> yeah, uh, my go-to is some good, good tequila. Uh, so let's see. Uh, yeah, now nah, it's not allowing not allowing me to let you in balancing cognitive um cognitive for sure now have you had these problems before you found out about your lesions or you know just like here recently like the day of or the day before okay um that's a good start you know that's a good start to um, get the little steroids to kind of help the flare up and what treatment you said you're on you're on Genevia Genevia I think that's what you said how long have you been on Genevia all right Ron Yeah, cause I'm gonna be honest with you. If you're if you're having four lesions to show up, jab 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 I want to put a V in it, Genevia or something. Just ain't uh. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's holding. And, okay, the treatments that we take, guys, we do have to know that they're preventive medications. Their jobs, if we are on any treatments, are supposed to prevent any other lesions to come. They're not like cures. And I think a lot of us sit and we look at these treatments as cures. Um, but they put our lesions into non-active existence. And they're supposed to prevent other lesions from coming up. Um, <laughs> that's the all being accent adding to be exactly. You are so right. Because uh, I was trying to tell somebody about black seed, and they was like, "Are you saying? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got flax seed." And I thought about you, Koji. I'm like, "No, no, no." And they came out. Are you? Did you say flax or black? Um. But yeah, yep, yeah, this is just post-extended time in between relapse and in some cases, like mine, I can't say that the treatment that I was on um, has like have stopped the, um, I've had a couple of relapses in between, but I haven't had any lesions come up and no activity, but um, so I can say that, but You'd be very, and I guess someone can get worrisome if they've gone through a lot of treatments because your body is going, that's a lot of chemicals that you're going through. And so this is only, 
this is only my third treatment. My first treatment was six months. And my second treatment was every bit of about six, seven years. I actually went almost a whole year without being on it and started it back. So I want to say about six years, and then I'm on this new medication, which I just did a, a year of. And um, you're gonna go outside and count the um. <laughs> but uh, I'm about to actually get off myself here, and I'm just gonna go over these points, um, bullet points again, guys. If you didn't see all the show, please go back and um. Uh, so that you can get a little bit in depth with what we talked about. And the first bullet point was, our fear is what we've lost and also not wanting to lose more. We have a problem with that, especially with the MS. And you know, the other fear is that we, um, the other bullet points, fear can only be overcome by yourself alone and no one else. The last bullet point was, living your best life with who you are presently produces a better past and paves a better future. So, and you know, with that being said, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you got that subscribe button here in that corner. And then you have that previous episode right here, down here. And if you're watching this on Facebook, man, you're missing, I, you're missing some great stuff on YouTube. Go subscribe. It's a hundred videos on YouTube. Some that have not been posted on Facebook. Um, some that have been posted on Facebook, but you can't see anymore in my video, my video log. Some great episodes with different other um, MS Warriors. Uh, we have the Fierce Friday and MS Monday, the previous episodes. Um, go on over there to YouTube, subscribe, like, chat, comment, and even here, guys, if it's something that you would love for me to talk about or bring to the light, please comment, please inbox me. And also, look, if you need MS merch, let me know. Go to ICanBeMS.com forward slash store. Doesn't that look nice? And don't you want one? You guys have a great day. Peace. Love you.